Good morning from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant, hoping you're enjoying your weekend, and we welcome you to Kentucky Newsmakers. How is the economy doing in central Kentucky? One of the best predictors is home sales. Those are strong. We'll be hearing from the president of the Lexington Bluegrass Board of Realtors, Carl Tackett. That'll be in just a few minutes. But first, a wider look at the region's economic vitality from an icon on the business scene locally, Alan Stein, who is right now serving as the chairman of the board of Commerce Lexington. We'll see what trends he sees out there, what he's also heard during a recent trip of about 200 community leaders to Charleston, South Carolina. There was a heavy focus on education and workforce development as they compared notes with leaders in that southern city. On the final day of the trip, the Lexington group went to the Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, the scene of that mass shooting last year. That trip uh, included what was called a courageous conversation. Alan Stein joining us on Kentucky Newsmakers. And we thank you for being here. You bet, Bill. How you, are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. You've been here with uh, wearing several different hats over the years, and we appreciate it each time. You don't, you don't count number of appearances on the show, do you? That's good. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Uh, you're serving now as uh, the chairman of the uh, the board at uh, the Commerce Lexington. Uh, what are your overall impressions, Alan, right now about the vitality of, uh, of the Lexington region's economy? Well, of course, that's a, the critical question that we face all the time, Bill. It really is uh, quite an honor and a privilege to serve as Commerce Lexington's chair. But from that position, you get to see an awful lot of things that are going on around the community. So in a word, what I would tell you is, is that uh, we're relatively robust as, uh, as a region. Our economy is strong. Uh, we have low unemployment. We have uh, a lot of opportunities for growth, new businesses coming here all the time, emerging uh, young entrepreneurs are, are helping fuel that. <clears throat> but in addition to that, we do have some challenges, of course, and uh, Commerce Lexington is always at the ready to deal with those challenges. But I can tell you that uh, the forecast for us those of us here in central Kentucky is a very good forecast. The region uh, maybe didn't feel the recession as badly as some areas. Some people have said in Kentucky it's never as good or as bad as it can be in the, in the, the extreme parts of the country. Uh, and is some of that because of the diversity of employment here with uh, you know education, health care, uh, manufacturing, retail? Some say that insulates the area. It, it does insulate us. Now, there's no such thing in my world uh, of being recession proof, but I think Lexington and Central Kentucky are what we might call recession resistant, and it's because of the diversification of our economy. We do have a wide and varied uh, a range of opportunities for business and success here, and so when one does falter, it can be picked up. Now, that's not to say that we don't feel uh, you know, the fear of perhaps when we thought we might lose Lexmark and all those jobs. Uh, you, you always want to make sure that our automotive sector is strong here in Central Kentucky. But the burgeoning healthcare industry, reaching out and touching all of the Commonwealth, those sorts of things working together uh, really make us a safe place for an economy to grow. And I'll tell you that when things are all clicking, we are really hot. Are we doing a good job of preparing the workforce uh, for today and tomorrow? I'd love to tell you that we are. Um, I, what I would suggest to you, though, is that we do have some deficiencies in our workforce development. Uh, there are a lot of things that are happening here in the Commonwealth uh, that are turning that around. Uh, some of the conversations we're having with Fayette County Public Schools, with Commerce Lexington, sort of as the impetus for a career academies program, this new generation learning is going to address that. We have a superstar here in the Bluegrass Community Technical College. Uh, but we do go lacking quite often uh, for those folks who might want to locate here and just don't have the full skilled labor force that we need. It's not a Lexington problem necessarily as much as it is a Commonwealth of Kentucky problem. And in our view, my view personally, the way we attack that is with education. And education starting from the earliest grades that we can all the way through to higher education, training our folks to understand that you don't have to be a 
doctor, a lawyer. You can be any of the trades that are skilled or even less skilled and make a very good living here in the Commonwealth and certainly in Lexington. About 200 community leaders from uh, Lexington and the Bluegrass region made a trip down to Charleston, South Carolina, and you go there to compare notes and, uh, and talk about some uh, opportunities. Uh, what were the biggest takeaways for you? Well, you know, it was uh, perhaps, I, I've been on many, many of these trips. We uh, have been doing this leadership visit for decades, seven decades, I think, from Lexington. And Lexington is renowned nationwide as having perhaps the best uh, group of journeying people to another community. 200 is a, a huge number when you consider that it's our government leaders, our council, our business leaders, our civic leaders, uh, nonprofits, healthcare, all walks of life in that affect the economy here in central Kentucky attend these leadership visits and we had a concentration on education first and foremost. Uh, the new generation learning program, uh, uh, career academies, we were able to see it in action there in Charleston. They have that. Uh, from a workforce development program, uh, Trident University down there, which is a public uh, community college, uh, is training for Boeing and BMW and so many other organizations that have come to that area simply because they have the training for workforce development. We learned a lot from those folks. But we talked about other things that are relevant to Lexington. We talked about tourism as a brand. Charleston, of course, is a world brand. Well, so are we here in Lexington. So we learned from some of their experts how they go about spreading that brand. Um, and as you mentioned uh, at the top, uh, we kind of uh, ended the whole conversation with something more universal. Uh, certainly it's not unique to Lexington or Charleston or other places, but we had what we called a courageous conversation about race. Uh, we challenged our folks in the one place where it made sense to ask these questions. We were actually in Mother Emanuel Church, the scene of that tragic uh, uh, mass shooting last year, almost one year to the day. Uh, we were able to visit with their ch chief of police, their former and current mayors, um, the pastor now at Mother Emanuel Church, and we had leaders on the panel in this discussion as well from Lexington, including our mayor and chief of police and other faith leaders. And we asked ourselves some very difficult questions, things that uh, we don't often talk about in polite society, but they do have uh, a really strong impact on the economy. Take, for example, if you yeah. would, yeah. how would you like to be uh, the, the uh, chairman of the board of the Chamber of Commerce in Ferguson, Missouri? How do you sell a community yeah. that has had a tragedy? In Charleston, they had perhaps the worst, worst tragedy of all with the shooting in the church, and yet they met it with peace and love and no protests and no looting and fires. We went down there to learn how they did that, and we came away uh, very powerfully moved, and we're going to continue those conversations here in Lexington. It's always good when you can compare notes with uh, other communities and share their experiences and the things that they've been through, but at the same time, when you get 200 people out of town and there's some, some free time to have discussions and so forth, you can talk about some things back home. You, you certainly Assume can. you did some of that and talked about uh, some of what uh, the region could be. Absolutely. I, everyone has uh, the own, their own things that they're really interested in. Uh, so it gives you an opportunity sort of offline uh, to have a, more of a deep dive conversation. Uh, some of the things that I'm personally interested in include the new sportsplex and we had a great opportunity. We had 11 council people there. So we had time one-on-one -on -one to visit with the council to explain to them uh, the value of bringing a sportsplex to our community and listening to them about some of the concerns that they had so that we could make this project better. But everybody does that. The healthcare people have things that they want to talk about with certain folks. Uh, the real estate people, you're going to have Carl on here uh, soon. Everybody has some way that they contribute to the economy. And these leadership trips give us the opportunity beyond the structure of being at home 
to kind of really dig in and see how we can make things work together. Alan, do you think there's enough of that in Kentucky? No, uh, sir. We have, uh, you know, we have our divides in so many ways, and uh, do regions function as robustly as they could, and does the state itself uh, come together enough? No. The answer to that is no, and I, and I don't know exactly what the reason for that is, Bill, but it, it's a much larger issue than regions talking together. Uh, we are living in a divided uh, world these days. Uh, it's being driven by media and social media and instantaneous conversation. Uh, we often find ourselves in echo chambers just listening or observing uh, those views that we want to hear to validate our own positions and we don't listen to each other very well or very much. Um, it, it impacts us all the way around. It impacts us in our inter interpersonal relationships, in race, in economy, in education. We need much more leadership getting us to talk together, finding out the synergies that make us work better, and overcoming those problems and challenges that exist because we haven't talked about them. Uh, I, you know, this is one person's opinion. I'm not speaking sure. for the chamber here, but no, we don't have nearly enough of that conversation. When you uh, meet uh, with chamber members and you talk about uh, the opportunities and uh, and going forward, do, do people generally have uh, optimism? I think most people in Central Kentucky are very optimistic. Uh, I, I I would suggest that. Uh, you know, there's some trepidation about the direction we're moving. This morning, we wake up to the news of uh, Great Britain uh, leaving the European Union. None of us really know what that means, but we all think we all understand that it's going to mean something. Um, <laughs> and, and business <laughs> tends to kind of uh, step back when a things happen. Absolutely. Right? You, you know? have yeah. to, Bill, yeah. because you, you, the, the most successful businesses are those that can see the future, plot a plan, and succeed in getting to your goals. And when you have all sorts of issues that tangentially can affect your business that you have no control over, uh, you have to slow down and let the clouds kind of clear out a little bit. Before I let you go, let me sure. just talk about what you're up to these days. I know, uh, you know, it, what a story. You're sort of a townie. You grew up here. <laughs> I, I certainly <laughs> am a townie. And you've done it all, radio uh, broadcasting early and uh, owned a, a bar in town at one point. Uh, you uh, were the founder of the Lexington Legends. Often I think I should go back to the bar business, to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, and then now you've moved on. And a lot of uh, consultants the work uh, right. that you're doing these days, and uh, and so you have that kind of perspective of uh, what's going on out in the state and in some of those areas. Uh, so, uh, what are you advising those people about? Well, we we advise everyone to have a plan. Yeah. Uh, we certainly uh, we we start many of our meetings in our company by asking a very simple question: What does success look like? Mm -hmm. And everything that we do moves into the direction of the answer of that question. Um, our consulting business is a very diverse portfolio. Uh, we've we've got dozens of clients in multiple states, uh, ranging from uh, representing public officials to manufacturing and and early startup technologies and professional sports teams, and and we manage some grants on behalf of uh, uh, some folks in Frankfurt, and we do affordable housing. We have a a lot of things going on in our, and that's the only way I can do it, Bill, because I get bored really easily. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps you busy, and, uh, and and then every now and then you take time out to do like the children's charity golf class, well, which yeah, you're going to sure. enjoy this weekend. <laughs> Alan, Absolutely. we appreciate you coming. You Thank bet, you very Bill. much. Good to see you. And we hope you'll keep it here on WKYT. Coming up, we'll see what the housing trends are in central and southern Kentucky. The president of the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors with us next on Kentucky Newsmakers. We welcome you back to WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers. Home sales are strong around the country and really hot, it appears, in the greater Lexington region. Right now, uh, as well as in some other parts of the state, the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors president for this year is Carl Tackett of Georgetown. He joins us now with some fresh numbers and some trends uh, for buyers and sellers, and we certainly appreciate you uh, coming in. 
Nice to be Thanks here. Thanks for being here. Hey, you've done this before, right? I have. You've served yes. before, and uh, so uh, how are you seeing uh, things go right now? We understand that the the news is pretty strong for home sales. It is. the uh, The market is really good. Uh, it's recovering, obviously, from a bad time from 2008 to about 2011, and uh, it's good for sellers. And how do you determine uh, the strength of a market? What are the, the factors that you're looking for? Is it uh, uh, the number of sales, the numbers of, of homes that are on the market, or the number of days they stay there? Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, uh, we have buyers right now that are looking. Uh, the, with the market and the inventory the way it is, uh, it's been a really good time for the market. Uh, the home sales are... are Increased. Our, our median sales have gone up. Our uh, inventory has gone down. Uh, so therefore, we're seeing uh, prices increase, which is good for the seller. And uh, and then the buyer, if they're looking, they better go ahead and, and grab hold because we're seeing multiple offers on a lot of properties and uh, quick closes. Mm -hmm. uh, even with TRID, uh, which is the new uh, CFPB rules and regulations for banking, uh, we're seeing. Uh, uh, the sales are, are going pretty smoothly, even with the new mm -hmm. uh, banking reg regulations. You mentioned about it being tough back mm -hmm. there, starting in the 2008, and for some years after that, as mm -hmm. people had difficulty getting access to credit. Is that uh, you say mm -hmm. that is easier now, or is it still? Uh, yeah, well, credit that, scores obviously yeah. are, are crucial uh, when when someone's applying for a for a home loan, and um, the new guidelines. Uh, you know, make it to me make it a little bit hard for the bankers, but obviously it, it's made it better for home buyers. And, and to me, we're seeing a better trend uh, with banking now, because uh, even though a lot of people don't like the new regulations, uh, you know, to me it's kind of cleaned some things up that that probably needed cleaned up. What do you advise somebody who may be uh, thinking about buying a new home, and you know how important that credit score must be? Mm -hmm. uh, should you start to eye that situation, uh, you know, several months or, yes. or a year or so down the road? Yes, definitely. Uh, as a realtor, we, we want people to pre-qualify, you know, to be sure that they can afford a house, uh, be sure the price range that they're looking at, that they can qualify for that. So do that prior to, you know, uh, looking for that house. Mm -hmm. and, and what else should they do to uh, be sure their credit score is the best it can be? Um, Obviously, don't overspend. Yeah, you know, I think that's that's really Simple important. Simple as that. Yeah. Right. Uh, are there some segments of uh, home sales that are stronger than others right now? What what what? Where are you seeing the most activity? Um, probably the two hundred thousand range uh, is a real good market. Uh, we're seeing a lot of buyers that can qualify in the two hundred thousand range with the interest rates staying low. Uh, Upper end housing, you know, 300 plus is still a little slow. Uh, but in certain areas, I mean, with the inventory the way they are, about 1.8 months for Fayette County, uh, even less than that in some places, uh, you know, some zip codes are even less than that inventory wise. So if, if a person's looking for a house, you know, they need to grab it quick uh, because we're seeing a lot of multiple offers uh, on, on properties. And it's basically based on, you know, what they're actually looking for. You have a good uh, perspective because you have uh, based your career in Georgetown mm -hmm. and uh, certainly uh, the surrounding cities to, uh, to Lexington right. uh, are their own entities. But at the same time, do people look at the entire bluegrass region oh, as they do. that they want to live somewhere and they'd really, uh, they don't pay that much attention to those uh, jurisdiction lines? Uh, it doesn't seem to uh, as much anymore. Uh, obviously, people are looking for a bargain wherever they go. Uh, in, in Scott County, we've, you, you know, our median price range has gone up. Our, obviously, our inventory has gone down. And with Toyota and all the changes that they're making, uh, you know, they're moving people around, moving people in. Uh, the new engineering plant, they're getting ready to open that at the site, at the Toyota site. So, uh, county per county, uh, they're looking for a bargain, you know. Obviously, Fayette County is a little bit higher, but the inventory is a lot less. 
So, you know, they may go to Lawrenceburg, they may go to Harrison County, mm -hmm. you know, to try to find a, a little bit better bargain. Are people willing to uh, commute as they once were, or are we seeing people wanting yeah. to be uh, closer in, or the, yeah, they, the they commute's no big commute. deal? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they still do commute. And, yeah. and what do they tell you about that? I mean, like if somebody works in Lexington, mm -hmm. you find them a bargain in Lawrenceburg, yeah. uh, they they're okay matter. with that. And gasoline prices are down. Yeah. You know, so that... that to me, that's a factor as well. How wide would you say that spread is? That uh, where people, are, where does there come to be a, a tolerance point with the commute? Uh, probably 45 minutes. Yeah. You know, 50 minutes max, somewhere in that range. Um, we've got some folks that are coming from northern Kentucky from the engineer Toyota engineering plant that are moving this direction. Also moving to Texas, and uh, you know, those people will either move, uh, you know, closer. Uh, they'll stay where they are, maybe because of schools. Uh, or they'll go to Texas. Schools, how important, uh, very important. is that? Yeah, right. very important. As you've seen here in Fayette County, with yeah. with so many changes here in Fayette County and redistricting and drawing lines and, and that type of stuff, you know, schools are really important. But, you know, when I look at schools, uh, Fayette County, Scott County, uh, we got great schools. We really do. You know, so I don't see issues with schools. Uh, and, and you know, some people will want to go to a certain area. Uh, but I, overall, I think we've got great schools. Do you, uh, you know, you look at how the, the, the region grows and plans for growth and, mm -hmm. and does the subdivisions and so forth. Are there times when you shake your head when you hear about a development or for the most part, do you think uh, uh, the region does a pretty good job of, uh, of, of setting up the, the subdivisions and, and the, the, the residential areas? I, yeah, I think, I think the, our developers have done a great job. Uh, you know, Affordable housing obviously is, is, is key and uh, you know I wish we were seeing more new construction I really do to keep up with the supply and demand issue right now but we're not you know obviously when a development comes on it takes time to put it together and uh, you know hopefully time will, will tell and you know the new new construction will kind of help even out our inventory. Did you so pay, I know in Scott County we're seeing a lot of new construction. Did you pay much attention to this issue in Fayette County with the, the property values and the, uh, the 10 acre lots where there was the no. issue that they were being uh, uh, taxed, getting a farm mm -hmm. tax break and I think there's going to be some, uh, some change on that so that may, right. that may be something that uh, some people watch. When we come back, just another couple of minutes here, we're going to be with Carl Taggett. We'll ask what kind of uh, things people are looking for in homes these days. What are the amenities they're looking for? And, uh, and uh, how simple is it to get going in uh, buying, looking at a new home, or selling a home? We'll be back. Wrap up Kentucky Newsmakers in a moment. Welcome back now to Kentucky Newsmakers on WKYT, and we are uh, talking this morning with the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors president for this year, Carl Tackett, who served in this position uh, before uh, some years ago, continuing our discussion. Do most people, Carl, look for an existing home, or do they want brand spanking new most of the time? Uh, and that's a good question. Uh, a lot of people want old because they think it's built better. But then <clears throat> I just wrote down a few things that people are actually looking for now. And uh, obviously number of bedrooms are important if it's a family. Uh, some people are looking for swimming pools. Granite pops are a big thing now. Uh, upgraded baths and kitchens. Uh, people like space in their baths and their kitchens. Uh, open spaces, uh, techn technological smart homes, uh, security, monitoring systems, uh, charging stations, and smart thermostats. Uh, those are all big deal. And storage, obviously, and then outdoor space is, mm -hmm. is crucial. Do people uh, tend to want uh, some land right now around the home, or do they want to keep it simple and, uh, <laughs> and not have to mow? Right. Well, you know, the, <laughs> the funny thing is about half the people that I'm, I'm currently working uh -huh. with, one does, one doesn't. One, yeah. one doesn't want any maintenance, uh, doesn't even want to mow a yard. The next person I take up, well, I want five acres, or I want ten acres, or or I want a small farm or, you know, we're seeing both. Yeah, so it depends yeah. on the taste it and on the person. I, I, you show a lot of homes to couples, obviously, mm -hmm. who are out there and families looking for homes. Right. Uh, what uh, trends do you see in terms of uh, the, the higher priority maybe that uh, the, the woman tends to put on it and, mm -hmm. and the man tends to put on it in those cases? Yeah, uh, it was funny because I was with some folks uh, just this week and uh, we, we looked at a house over in Harrison County because obviously the prices were a little bit better. And, uh, but we, the house we looked at at that time uh, had no woman touches in it whatsoever. 
And but the guy loved it. Uh -huh. So to give you an idea, I think you know the latest touch uh, in new construction is real important. Obviously, the lady they're they're going to be there more than the man, more than likely anyway. And what do the guys tend to want? Uh, man caves. Oh yeah. 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 They want that little space for themselves. <laughs> so more they can get away. Uh, we know millennials. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's tough for them. Sometimes yeah. they're not in position financially to buy. Uh, some of them would rather rent than buy. Are you? Do you see that mindset being a little different with the young crowd? Well, uh, and fortunately, I've had a chance to work with some younger folks uh, over the past few years, and uh, you know, rent rates are, are extremely high right now. And interest rates are extremely low. So if a person could put together the money, you know, we encourage them to buy not just for us, but you know, for their future. Uh, obviously, for tax breaks and that type of thing. But you know, once it's rented, the, the money's out the window. Uh, once they've bought, then there's the tax breaks. Let's talk about the seller just for mm -hmm. the minute we have mm -hmm. left here. Uh, mm -hmm. If people uh, want to, to get something to market, uh, mm -hmm. just some tips you would have for them uh, to get their home prepared to go uh, on the market. Car repeal is crucial. Uh, you know, if you if you got a house and it needs mulch, you know, the bushes trimmed, do that. Uh, you know, so when that person driving by, they, it catches their eye and, and they'll stop and look at it. Uh, obviously, clutter is, is a big deal. You know, if it's cluttered, uncluttered. Uh, one thing I tell folks a lot, uh, you know, with, with technology and everything, when people are in and out of houses, and there's items in there that you don't want to see, put them away. You know, just put them away. Yeah. Uh, find a closet, lock for them up. For safety reasons. For yeah. safety yeah. reasons, yeah. obviously. All right. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. Yes, sir. We appreciate it very much. Carl Tackett uh, serving this year as the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors President. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Kentucky Newsmakers. We'll see you bright and early this week on WKYT This Morning, and we hope you make it a good week ahead.